In around 15 to 20 years, there could be scenarios in our daily lives that may seem unimaginable today. For example, preschoolers might be able to solve complex math equations before they turn five years old. A little girl could be born against the odds without the genetic disease that runs in her family. A blonde hair, blue-eyed boy could be born when none of those characteristics exist in his family. These scenarios are no longer science fiction because designer babies are a very real discovery in the realm of genetics. We all know that humans can heal others, literally save someone from death. Well, now scientists are able to modify children before they are even born. These genetically modified children may seem like a tempting idea to assist humans in solving world problems and advancing our species, but there are a lot of points that need to be considered if the technology is used past life-threatening conditions. So how would designer babies even be created? Well, they'd be produced by the de development of biotechnology, which is the exploitation of biological processes for industrial and other purposes. This would allow parents to choose what type of baby they want, from hair color to eye color, to even aspects of their personality. The baby's genetic makeup has been artificially selected through genetic engineering to confirm the presence or absence of certain genes. CRISPR-Cas9 is the leading technology in the field, effectively editing the human genome with incredible success. A team in China used the technology in 2015 to develop designer babies, but there were limited accomplishments. The edits were imperfect and only altered some of the cells in the embryo, resulting in abnormal embryos with multiple genomes. However, since then, there have been numerous advances in the technology. More recently in Oregon, an embryo edit was reportedly much more successful. They created an alteration in an embryo that allowed to grow into a human who then had kids with traits that could reliably be passed down through generations. This is called a germline edit, and it basically means that scientists are now able to make heritable changes in the DNA of humans. An updated version of the original CRISPR technology was successful in changing specific traits in multiple species, including monkeys, mice, and certain plants. So even though changing traits is not yet as popular as editing genes in humans, we know that it's more than possible. To understand the difference between editing and changing DNA, we have to look at DNA mutations versus variations. Mutations cause rare diseases like Huntington's disease and cystic fibrosis. These are all usually caused by a single gene. On the other hand, DNA variations are just changes in the genetic code that are associated with more common traits and diseases. It's important to note that variations themselves won't determine a trait, but there are ways that scientists can increase the likelihood of a trait with genetic and non-genetic influences and multiple genes. To help you all understand this concept a bit better, there's a great way to compare this to a car. Let's look at DNA mutations as the failing brakes or a flat tire. These are things that are technical and make it harder for the car to function properly. On the other hand, DNA variations are just the color of the car or the model of the car. These are things that aren't vital to the car's ability to function, but affect the experience of riding the car. And this shows you the fine line between changing something that's life-threatening and something that's desirable. Now that we've seen everything that's possible, imagine how much this technology will cost once it's available to the average citizen. We can imagine that removing a simple health complication would cost thousands of dollars. So choosing the gender would cost around $100,000 and more, depending on additional features like hair color and eye color. What's more interesting is if the government discovers that the designer babies lower the cost of health care in the long run, they might encourage families to have more designer babies, regardless of the consequences. And this leads us to wonder what the experimental risks are. In August of 2017, CRISPR caused a success story, removing a heart condition from an embryo. This is incredible. Of course, there are always risks with manipulating DNA, and the simple reason is because geneticists are human. Before this technology that could potentially make us more robotic or perfect, 
We humans make mistakes. There is always the possibility of accidentally terminating the embryo. Maybe more alarming would be the fact that no one knows exactly what will happen to the human race after altering infant's DNA. It could alter balance and reap unforeseen consequences. For example, applying increased intelligence on a child could affect an increased anger. A higher resistance to HIV could affect a higher susceptibility to influenza or other more common diseases. Additionally, Accidental error could give rise to a new form of illness, something we may have no idea how to treat, giving us just more problems to worry about. Professor Rodden Scott, head of medical genetics at the University of Newcastle, says that if you look at it from an evolutionary perspective, you're going to weaken the gene pool and create a weaker species in the long term. Once you start choosing particular features, you start narrowing genetic choice. This means that special human characteristics could be wiped out completely. The bottom line is that no one knows exactly what effects this could have on our species. Now, my English class just finished reading one of Shakespeare's best tragedies a couple weeks ago. And uh, in the book, in one of the last acts, Shakespeare wrote something that completely stood out to me. Um, ironically, the character that said this quote was a doctor, but he said, unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. And of course, this could apply to anything. If you do something abnormal, whether that's positive or negative, you're also likely to get an effect that's unexpected or out of the ordinary. And that might seem scary, but in terms of designer babies, societal changes could be the most unnerving effect of designer babies. So people who would normally have miscarriages, infertility, and genetic diseases can now pay for it to be fixed. At a surface level, that seems pretty good for individuals. People just want the best for their children. That makes sense. However, if we look at it a little deeper, we might discover that only the wealthy will be able to afford the technology, creating a more profound gap between the rich and the poor. Further so, there would be a gap between edited and natural babies. Children could grow up in an environment where they may feel less than their edited counterparts. And this takes the high school clicks that you and I know to the next level. <laughs> the technology itself gives children an unnatural advantage for certain things they may not normally be able to do. The gap in society could create a more hostile, unwelcoming, less accepting environment to natural babies similar to racism. So looking at all of this, some may argue that we humans are dehumanizing our species. Modifying children like food is unarguably raising ethical concerns, but remember, scientists want this to be a positive thing. Longer lifespans, increased intelligence, that all sounds pretty tempting to me. However, completely removing flaws would also rid our society from emotions like empathy, acceptance, and satisfaction. How are we going to cope with the repercussions of designer babies if we can't even accept the flaws of others today? Would eliminating flaws really help us, or does it just showcase the greed that is hidden beneath all of this intelligence we humans have naturally? There is no argument that if this technology is used tastefully, it will help humanity. Editing DNA so children are able to survive against the odds is absolutely miraculous and should be treasured. However, if we go down this path, we may never be able to control how far the technology will evolve. The question that needs to be addressed is, past life-threatening conditions, how far will we let this go? In the United States, every citizen has the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, liberty is a state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority on one's way of life. Changing kids' DNA when unnecessary potentially violates the child's freedom. Now, I love the movie Jurassic Park, and in the movie there's a character named Ian, and Ian's famous quote is, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could they didn't stop to think if they should. Of course, none of the scientific advancements we have today would have happened without taking risks. 
We don't know how many of the scary outcomes I listed earlier will actually happen if we choose to proceed with the technology. But we do know that everyone will want relatively the same thing out of the te technology. To be smarter, to be more athletic, more attractive, to live longer, that is dangerous to our originality. We could lose what makes each one of us special. Regardless of ethical concerns, humanity is at the point where children are being changed like the vegetables we eat. Obviously, the designer baby's issue is highly debated around the world, as it should be. This will affect you, your children, and your descendants. People around the world can ponder this matter now before we have to stop the tears of natural children growing up beside their modified friends. Thank you.